And we're staying with developments in Ondo State where relatives, loved ones and sympathizers could not hold back their emotions earlier today at the funeral mass for victims of the terror attack at St. Francis Catholic Church Owo. Governor Akira Dolu and his wife attended the funeral mass. The Tierra governor, while recounting the terror attack, lamented the government has failed to defend the victims of the attack. Ayodeji Muradio has more. Relatives, family members, Catholic faithful and residents of Owo gathered in this hall to beat victims of the June 5 attack on St. Francis Catholic Church Owo. Farewell. This was a service that took away courage from many, letting out tears. Solemn songs and prayers were rendered for the victims of the attack. Hey, who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior? The hall was filled Blessed. with people who wore black attire. That has brought us together today. The officiating minister and Catholic bishop of Oyo Diocese urged the federal and state government to wake up and sit up. How many more must die before the senseless killings in Nigeria stop? In these coffins, a part of Nigeria lies dead. Because lying down here with these deceased ones are the joys and hopes and aspirations of their families. Governor Rotimi Akredolu admitted the failure of government, but assured that it will continue to ensure that lives are protected. We have failed. We have failed. We have failed to defend these people. Not because we are not trying, but because the forces on the other side, they are evil. Other dignitaries also urge the federal government to find a lasting solution to the security challenges. Where we are now, this is not Nigeria. We don't recognize our country any longer. For two weeks, these military officers from eight African countries have undertaken a UN military observation training in Abuja. Apologize for that mix up. Let's talk to Dr. Kabira Damu now, who's the managing director of Beacon Consultant Limited, uh, for more on this new development. You had the governor admitting that government indeed has failed the people, particularly the victims of the Owo attack. But in the same breath, he also did mention that it wasn't about government's um, lack of effort, but evil from the other side. I is there some sense here that government itself has has reached its wit's end and perhaps has been overwhelmed by these attacks? Um, so he, we could look at it from that angle, or we could look at it from the angle that because government is not being held um, to accountable, uh, government is not using the powers that are at the, its uh, disposal to go after the perpetrators. Uh, I hate to say, from my standpoint, as um, a risk, an enterprise risk management specialist, that we're seeing a politicization of security. People have died. The those who are behind the killing are yet to be arrested. Neither has anyone who was supposed to provide security and protection to those people that were killed have been held responsible or accountable for the death that occurred. So clearly, um, statements are made, uh, you know, sentiments are whipped up during funerals, but the core function of going after the perpetrators, unfortunately, we're not seeing enough action in that regard. And that is where I think uh, the crux of the matter lies. Um, the fact that uh, no one is holding anyone in government accountable when these issues occur. Indeed. The Western Security Network was born a few years ago, and it was the Southwest response to attacks like these. On those states seem to have recorded some successes in the past years. When you hear news of this development, what does this say as regards the clamor for state police and 
its um, potential solution to um, these kind of problems? Um, so my honest opinion is, um, as, as someone who understands um, national security, a different from national defense, uh, when we're advocating for state policy, and I am an advocate of the decentralization of security. Now, by that, by decentralizing security, I'm also an advocate of the democratization of um, the security functions at the state level. So if those that are advocating state um, policing are suggesting that we take what we have at the federal level and put some of it at the state level, that's not what I want to see. I want to see um, a more responsive policing arrangement emerging at both the state level and at the uh, local government level, an uh, a policing arrangement that would be answerable to the people and that would seek to protect the people, not the kind of federal policing arrangement where uh, the tendency is to protect only those who are either rich or are politically exposed. If we have a reputation of that at the state level, then we're going to hand over the machinery and the instrument of force to governors who unfortunately are currently serving as emperors and do not have very limited checks in terms of the um, three uh, you know, arms of government that, that we have. And so uh, we'll have many emperors, 36 many emperors, as it were, unfortunately. And I do not think that will all go well for our democracy. Indeed. So we've seen some consultations and some visitations, particularly in the southwest aftermath this incident. But would you say the government is taking necessary steps to you know, ensure that a subsequent attack of this nature will not happen. Have you seen practical steps in that regard? Not at all. Um, and I say this with all sense of responsibility. Practical steps would mean going after those, the perpetrators, um, identifying them in a very transparent manner that reduces the kind of conspiracy theories that are flying around at the moment, presenting them in a competent court of law, uh, if they are criminals, if they are terrorists, they are caught for whatever the offenses. And thank God, the governor of Ondo State is, is, is sad. Um, he, you know, he understands the need for judicial processes, so presenting them so that the deterrent element within our criminal justice system is served. Uh, the second function is the need to also uh, educate uh, residents and citizens. I I keep on saying that the vulnerable elements within the society, they are there, they exist. And I haven't seen much effort in terms of improving the resilience of these vulnerable elements. There are two major functions. The counterterrorism strategy, if it's a terrorist attack, the counterterrorism strategy, and then the resilience of the local population. What kind of anti-terrorist measures? How do we have in place to protect this vulnerable? I have, I'm not seeing enough of that. You're saying that we must move beyond the emotional response to uh, identifying the strategy needed to avert um, future attacks. Dr. Adamu, good to hear from you tonight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.